Welcome back for another weekly Zoom meeting. Uh, it's, it's another good meeting to pull everyone together to see as the season gets started, officially underway. Talking with some folks before this meeting got started, we know that some of you have tenants currently or may even have had tenants since uh, June 8th. So you're in the thick of it now. Others, I'm sure, are having their first tenants upcoming. So getting ready, any last minute preparation items are I underway, Joan, I think that goes for you, right? Your first tenants are this weekend? Uh, they arrive on Friday night, yep. All right, so you're not, you're not busy or anything? Oh, no, <laughs> not, nothing to do. <laughs> so nothing like the last couple minutes uh, before your first tenants arrive for the season, but this season, of course, uh, all more important to get all the ducks in a row. So we'll go through, like in previous weeks, we will go through just a couple tidbits that we've come across over the past week and then open it up to the audience here to ask questions. And if you haven't attended the last few weeks, we've been doing that through the raise hand option and you can check out the chat message. I've put instructions there if you can't find the raise hand option. Um, if you raise your hands vigorously like this, we may be able to see you, but <laughs> there are a lot, of, a lot of squares on the screen. So we'll go with the raise hand option. Most of you, uh, hopefully most of you saw the survey that we sent out. That was in reference to a lot of common questions that we've been receiving over the weeks, uh, either by phone and email and during the Zoom calls, wanting to hear collectively how this community is handling various issues. And if anything was clear through that, it's that there is no right or wrong answer. We've looked through these results and you know, there's not an answer to any of the questions that came out that was just overwhelmingly in the majority. And everybody has their own method of doing something. It's not, there's no right or wrong for the most part to how to implement these regulations from the state. So I, I guess that's it's reassuring in some ways that you, know, you can take matters into your own hands, but it doesn't make it any easier. There's a lot of complexities here and you have to come up with a method that works for you to meet the government standards uh, for turnovers and cleaning and so forth. Um, I'm not going to go through the details of the survey right now. We're still collecting some of the results, but we will distribute that out and you'll be able to see kind of the results. I will give you just uh, a couple highlights, however, from that, from the survey. Uh, it's not a surprise, but in terms of, kind of the changeover, to give you an example, the changeover, what we saw was that a third of the folks were, were able to implement a process that didn't require any change to the turnover time. You're able to do the turnover time within the, whatever your standards were in the previous years and you still feel that you can meet those demands of the regulations and so you haven't changed anything. Others have extended it. Another third of our audience have extended their turnover time within the same day. Uh, and then beyond that, we had probably less than 10% of folks that are offering 24 hours to some people, and then another 10% that are requiring at least 24 hours. So you can see just the varied responses, just to a question like that is, is we're all across the board and it, it, you have to choose what works for you. The other thing that I saw that I, I, I did like to see was that the vast majority of you were leaving cleaning supplies and disinfectants. So while I'm not sure if it's, government mandated in the regulations to, to leave those supplies, it's highly recommended and it certainly says a lot to your tenants that, you know, you're thinking of their safety when they arrive to have, have things like that. And that's ultimately what we get to when we talk about these regulations is, you know, keeping the safety uh, of your guests in it to, and of your cleaning and any cleaning crew and anyone else that comes in top priority. So stay tuned for the rest of the survey results. There's, I, I, I think there's, in addition to all the survey questions that we can summarize, there was a lot of answers that you guys gave, a lot of detailed answers that we need to go through. And again, it just shows that there, there isn't, even, even in our multiple choice answers, there's a lot of people that have even additional options beyond that. So we'll, we'll summarize that and send that out in a little bit. Um, that being said, going into, for those that are upcoming, kind of their first tenants, Joan, what, do you see as kind of, what are your, and you yourself, what do you see as some of the last minute preparation items that people should be thinking of and important to take note of? Well, we're still getting um, inquiries, from, um, emails uh, from uh, vacationers who have booked homes 
and aren't quite sure of what's happening. Um, they may be people who are coming from out of state and they just don't, they haven't heard from their homeowner. And um, even if they're, you know, they may be coming late in August, but they're still curious. And um, so it's important to reach out to them, but um, it, they're also wondering about, well, you know, are restaurants open, that kind of thing. So um, best to gather the information. I know that some of the chambers, um, I know Orleans and Nantucket um, are two of them, and I imagine others are too, are accumulating the information about restaurants and their, um, their policies um, and their uh, takeout um, menus um, and you know what the whether you can uh, order online so it's really I think it behooves all of us homeowners to have that information I'm sending it prior to their arrival so that they could just look at that list and I based it on Orleans um, Chamber and their list of of restaurants that offer um, takeout or outdoor dining and I know that information is changing as we're continuing to open up, but um, vacationers are going to want to know and also, you know, prepare them for for a wait. So, you know, for some lines and and so it's always best for them to check ahead and even order online ahead. And there are a lot of places that are doing uh, contactless pickup too. So. Um, it's, you want to make sure that they have a good time despite the restrictions uh, that are occurring. Um, but it's, it's also, Joan, just a, a, a good reason to, to check in with your guests before their arrival. I, this year is of, it's, it's important, it's important every year, but this year is more important to make that connection with your guests and get, be in contact with them before they arrive so that you have some some sort of relationship with them that they feel a little more comfortable. They may want to be easier to reach out to you upon their arrival. Um, but if you've reached out to them a couple times, maybe once about cleaning protocols that you're putting in place, and then you're reaching out before they arrive with this information that Joan's talking about, restaurants, you're establishing the, some rapport that does make it easier to manage the guest experience while they're at your home. Let's say something actually com comes up and arises where there's an issue. Now, they, they may have an easier time contacting you, not making it such a big deal. Um, and so it's just, it, we highly recommend just making that connection. Don't just assume that somebody booked in J January is going to arrive in July and all is fine and, and you just don't need to check in with them. This is a good opportunity to, to find some ways to check in with your guests. So, and I think, um, anything else, Joan, on that? Um, well, just make sure that you print out um, and post somewhere the cleaning checklist um, as well as the cleaning log so that your, you can inform your cleaning crew uh, that someone should sign off on it uh, when they leave. So they'll, they'll put their initials or their name and, and the date and the time um, to um, indicate to the incoming guests that the, the uh, a home has been um, cleaned and, and disinfected and is ready for them, um, gives them that added um, assurance. Uh, so find a place where they won't miss it and make sure, you know, the cleaners will, will be prepared to do that, I, um, but check with them to be sure. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, which is not really a, um, anything, um, it's about the, the lodging tax. Um, some of you may already know that the Department of Revenue, um, and you probably got an email to this, this um, uh, point, but the Department of Revenue is now postponing the date when your tax is due to be remitted. So any of your stays, any of the tax that you collected from February First to July 31st is now not due to the Department of Revenue until September 20th. Um, August obviously will be on schedule also due September 20th, but um, for those of you who had June and July uh, bookings, 
you don't have to remit any tax in August. It, it will all be due um, by September 20th. So um, I guess some people were hoping that there'd be a reprieve altogether, but um, that is not going to happen. Um, but I guess this was their concession to at least postpone the remittance of it. Can I just add one thing? You guys can hear me, right? Yes. Yep. Um, I was just checking in with my guests um, after the ones that are, you know, the ones for, from about a month from now. And I, for the first time, and this may be the same for many of you, for the first time, I am not including linens. And I have a couple of repeats. So it's just another thing just to remember if you're not including linens, especially if you normally do, just remind them so they don't show up without sheets or towels or anything. It's right. just a little thing. Yeah, that's um, that's really important and beta. And I think that whether you usually supply them or not, do make sure that they know every year there are people who come to a rental and realize, oh my gosh, I didn't know that they didn't supply sheets. They they may have always gone to a condo or or some rental where they didn't even think about it. It's and and on the Cape that's and islands, it's not always the case that, that linens are, are supplied, but it depends on their experience and they may not realize that that they're not. So be sure to tell them what, what's included and what's not. I like your sign, Beta, on island time. <laughs> I showed up here on time, didn't I? <laughs> um, and then a last last item on uh, preparation for those that don't have tenants yet uh, is just the expectation that your guests are likely, many guests are likely to spend more time at your home this summer, just with restrictions or events that are not occurring. Uh, you would expect that there are going to be families that spend a lot more time at your home. So what does that mean? Is just, you know, if there's something that you can do to, you know, something simple, you keep it simple, but is there something you, you provide some extra lawn games if you have a yard? Um, you know, if you have a fire pit, you provide a s'mores kit. So something very small and simple that you could provide knowing that you, you're, you may have families coming that are spending a little more time at, at the rental. All right, that was uh, looking one other question, Joan, before we open it up. Um, there was a question out on uh, the Facebook community group today that I want to address. Uh, Joan, I mentioned it to you about a rental request that included a service dog. And is it required that a owner accept a guest with a service dog? Joan, do you know what is required and what is what, what know, can the homeowner do? I know that for, let's say, a, a long-term rental, like a year's lease, that I believe you, you must accept the pet. But you have to realize that that pet is going to be the only one in there. It's not going to be followed the next week by a family that might have severe allergies. So um, it's my understanding that you can deny a, um, a service pet or emotional support um, pet of, of some kind um, by saying that you, you know, you advertise your home as a pet free home. People have booked it as pet free. Some of the people specifically say that they've got severe allergies and so they wouldn't even be able to come to your home if you had that service dog there. So I think that despite what people who owners of service dogs might say, I think they're under the impression that, that you can't deny them. And, and I do think you, you can. Um, I think it's important because you, oh, and you, even your own family might have um, allergies. You, you just can't take that chance and then tell the next people, well, you know, it was a service dog, so I had to accept them. I just don't think that you do under these circumstances with the short-term rentals. Right, right. So, and you can't, you can't accept that guest and say only on the condition of the lack, you know, if you don't have a service dog. And I think that's where the discrimination could potentially come into place if you say yes, but 
you can't bring a service dog. Yeah, I think you have to. It's it's either you accept that accept your guest under those conditions, or or you cannot, or you do not accept the. You say, you give your reasons as you explain for why you can't accept any pets. Right, and I I always think that there are, you know, we have a specific way for vacationers to check off pets considered in their search and come up with those homes that are pet friendly and. That's what they should use. Okay. All right, what I'd like to do, uh, Joan, do you have anything else you wanna add before we open it up? Not at the moment. All right, uh, we are gonna open it up to questions. I'm gonna paste it in again in case you haven't seen it on the chat window. Does everyone know how to access the chat? I'm adding it to the, oh, how to add, access the chat. Yeah. <laughs> we need to give instructions on how to access the chat, but no, if you give you, it's, it's chats at the bottom. If you're on desktop, which most of you are, or on an iPad, it should be one of the chat icons at the bottom of the screen. You'll see instructions. Um, uh, Jim, I just noticed uh, Christy Peterson's um, chat about uh, the renters accumulating more trash because of all the takeout dinners. <laughs> um, that's an important point. Uh, depending on how often you have your trash picked up, uh, you might want to be aware that it's going to, it could be almost twice as much as, as usual with more people um, dining in and especially uh, bringing uh, takeout into the home because uh, you know you know that the packaging is uh, sometimes pretty un unwieldy and accumulates fast. Good point. Um, while we don't have additional questions, Joan, just following back up a question in from Robin on just is there do we have we identified any legal documentation any legal backing to denying a service animal I, have we seen i've looked and i i have not found it i've only found that you cannot deny um a long-term renter of a service animal uh any lawyers in the group here <laughs> All right, we've got, got a question from Cindy. Unmute you, Cindy. There we okay, go. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, in regard to that question, last year I had someone who, um, I do allow animals, but I have to okay them. Um, but I had somebody bring a, a, a dog, psychological support dog or something, you know, weird. Um, and all I know is that you, I normally charge like $400 for a pet and you can't charge for them. She told me I couldn't deny they're having the dog there either, but I have no backing with that, and no knowledge from a legal standpoint. Um, but one thing I just do want to bring out is unfortunately today, this morning, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut came out and that they are requiring all travelers from states with high coronavirus rates to quarantine for 14 days and they're requiring it. I think we have to be very careful Baker doesn't do this. Because if he comes out with that, then we're all in a lot of trouble for anybody coming from one of the high risk states or flying in. Correct, we were just in the maybe 10 minutes before the meeting started, we, we saw that as well and saw the note that the tri-state area, their hotspots, they didn't list out the states, but they did list examples such as Florida and Texas as hotspots. So if yeah. somebody leaves from New York, even if somebody travels from New York to Florida for vacation and comes back, they're gonna be asked to quarantine when they come back. So right. anybody traveling from a hotspot, whether you live there or you're just vacationing there, how that, so one, that's not gonna hurt the travel to the Cape, but yes, the, the similarities, you know, we are up in the Northeast, you know, we don't want, we hopefully, would not see that uh, from Baker. 
I, I think that's why we are stressing, we, we need a vacation, our stressing to vacationers on a broad level where we can is to vacation responsibly. I mean, I think that's what everybody wants is, we know there are guidelines, we know there's social distancing rules that are out there and we want everyone to adhere by those. Right. Um, you know, it's just everyone's best interest, so. I just think the problem is, as Baker has said before in his um, suggestion of quarantining for 14 days, is that he does it to go along with the other states. I think we just have to be a little bit worried that in case Baker jumps on the bandwagon along with Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey and makes that a requirement. The states that are out there that they're listing now is Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Washington, Utah, and Texas. Now, fortunately, we, we don't, the vast majority of the vacationers to the Cape and Islands in the summer are from a short drive away. They're, they may be from out of state, but barely. Um, so we don't get a lot of visitors from Alabama or Arizona or Texas or even Florida. Um, and so, you know, I think that we may stand in a, in a, we stand a better chance of not having that restriction imposed on us. Right. It, it, you know, it is the general rule, but I know this year I had people flying in. I have still people later in the year flying in from Florida sure. right. later in the summer. Uh, so hopefully by then that's all done with. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I, it certainly re uh, stopped a lot of people from flying. Yeah. Right. Something to Thank watch. You. Thank you, Cindy. Yep. All right. Lori, you're up next. Just unmuting. Hi, Lori. With the guidance about removing all the paper, um, and I did see a few answers in the chat, I was wondering what people are doing about books and puzzles and high touch games, and for that matter, condiments. <laughs> I don't think how many people touch a salt cellar, a jar of cinnamon. Um, I did get some answers, but I'm interested in more answers. Okay, sure. Right. Um, um, I I think that um, from what I've heard from other uh, homeowners, that as far as books, I, I, I think people should feel comfortable leaving the books as they are, where they are. I think that if vacationers don't want to touch the books, they don't have to. I know someone who decided that she would put any games and puzzles for kids up on a high shelf so that it kind of leaves that responsibility um, in the hands of the uh, adults in the party as to whether they want their children to, to play with them or not. Um, and um, with uh, regard to spices, again, they don't, they don't have to use them if they don't feel comfortable using them. But I, I just think to strip everything bare is, is really not, um, uh, not something that people necessarily need to do. Um, I'm leaving an empty refrigerator. I, in the past, I have sometimes left condiments, but I just think this summer, I want them to walk in and just find nothing in the refrigerator. <laughs> Me too, that's what I did. <laughs> but, it's nice, but it's nice to have some things left. I mean, either, you can't expect that every little thing in your house, we've talked about decluttering or simplifying and it makes sense, but you, you're not taking away and leaving your house bare bones. So the, the responsibility is going to lie also on a vacation or to follow best practices. And you can go back to the common best practices of wash your hands, don't touch your face. I mean, that just pertains to whether you're inside the house, outside, or out in the community. You got to be following those rules. So, um, you know, it's, there's, there's no hard and fast rule of what needs to be every little uh, game or book needs to be cleaned or whatnot. Thanks for the suggestion on the higher shelves. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Doug, welcome back. Let's see if I unmute you. Unmute. There yeah. you are. Yeah, you know, concerning the refrigerator, uh, we've always uh, cleaned it every time. I mean, I think it's just a polite thing. It's nice to leave people things, but then again, many people are going to feel like, that's somebody else's, you know, jar of right. You know, <laughs> right. Especially this year. Of course, of course. The other thing too that Cindy brought up uh, concerning the fourteen days, right? I listened to Cuomo today, uh, as many of us do. You know, he's uh, he's very proud of himself, and he puffs his puffs his chest out, which is fantastic. 
I mean, we're so happy that that's changed, definitely. But as far as 14 days from out of state, uh, I don't, I mean, not that this makes any difference in this conversation totally. But I don't understand why all of a sudden you, you pass this imaginary line from one state to the other and you're a different species. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like we all, this is everywhere. Mm. So if you're going to get it and then nothing happens to you, or you're going to get it and you're going to get a little tiny cough or whatever, or you're going to get it and you really have problems, we don't know. But the point is, I don't know how they could enforce that anyway. Yeah. So I'm just not going to be concerned about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they, they, they can't. And, you know, the, the statement of urging doesn't ha hold much weight to it. I mean, I don't think you have people coming for a day or two to a hotel and they kind of, if a hotel tells them to urge you to quarantine, then what does that mean? So it, it doesn't really fly right now. Um, yeah. So it just, it's, that's why we keep turning the conversation on to just what other best practices can everybody follow just to stay safe. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jim. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. I think Doug lives in his workshop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jay Singer, you're up. Hi, Jay. Hi. Uh, I guess I'm on now. Yeah. Uh, my curiosity is, uh, about uh, provisions uh, going up there for my guests, and we're going to be going up in uh, next week ourselves for a couple weeks. That's what we had decided to do. We had some cancellations, so we figured we're going to take advantage of going to the Cape. Uh, but like the grocery stores, uh, are there lines uh, with more people coming up? Is there adequate provisions like they normally have during the, the summer for all the additional uh, traffic and people up there or is that becoming a problem and should i be recommending to my guests who are going to be coming up that they should take extra provisions with them i think that's a good idea to advise your your guests if, especially if they're driving to which most of them will be um, to bring um, as many provisions as they can in terms of, of food and staples that they want um, uh, I'm sure that the grocery stores are preparing for, uh, you know, much bigger crowds. But, you know, every store, it just seems to take longer these days. I've been, you know, doing some um, last minute errands and, you know, whether it's at a hardware store or TJ Maxx, um, you know, they um, are allowing only a certain number of people in the store. They... Um, you know, you have to, there are just lines, more lines everywhere. So, you know, if you can advise your guests to bring what they can, I think it's, it's probably the best idea. Who wants to, you know, be on vacation and, and stand in line at the grocery store, whether it's inside or outside? I haven't noticed um, lately lines outside of grocery stores, however. Um, so, uh, but I, I think, you know, it, it could be quite crowded as it always is, but even even more so. Are they to more normal hours now up there? I know in New York, we yes. started to resend uh, and bring back the hours. Yes, yeah, they're, they're more normal. What I found is that this, this, the shelves look very well stocked, but every time I went for something, it wasn't there. <laughs> you know, whatever I wanted, you know, the whole shelves were full. But that one thing that I wanted, they were out of. So you can't, you, probably like anywhere, you just can't expect to go to the store and just pick up paper towels or whatever it might be. Now there's tons of toilet paper, but there's no paper towels. So I think that might be another thing that we mentioned to our guests. Bring not only, you know, food things and stuff, but you might think about paper goods or anything. Don't expect to just be able to go in and get it. Mm -hmm. Right, and and for those that those that uh, travel down there or are live down there, you know what the grocery stores are like on Saturdays. It's no different than a Saturday turnover traffic. The grocery stores are busiest on Saturdays. People are in between check in. They're they have they, now they can't check in till maybe even later, so they have more time just to kill before they get into their homes, their rentals. So they're going to use that time to go to the grocery stores. I would not recommend to go to the grocery store on a Saturday. Just bring provisions with you. Go on Sunday, go on Monday. I mean, it just, you know, if it, it, this isn't like you have to avoid the grocery stores at all costs. It's just, if you want to avoid the crowds, pick a time that's just not, not during the peak time. 
Um, I also want to thank you, uh, Joan and Jim, and We Need a Vacation crew for all the valuable information. Uh, you've been a godsend in being able to help uh, direct us and keep us informed, but thank you. Right. Thank you for saying that. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. It's our pleasure. We're doing what we can do to hopefully get through this summer and make this a successful summer for all of you. Um, not a, not a, <laughs> has not been an easy time for anyone and very confusing and things are changing rap you know, every day. Uh, it seems things are changing up a little bit. Um, gonna let Lauren in. Lauren has something to add here. Lauren, you wanna? Yes, I just wanted to say that you know, this is going to continue changing in terms of social distancing and in terms of right now, we're still with the beginning of the phase two restrictions. And as time goes on in the next few weeks, that's going to lift up. And in terms of, you know, right now, uh, restaurants can do takeout and uh, some outdoor dining. They will be um, instituting some kind of indoor dining with social uh, distancing within X amount of time. But if you are on the Cape right now, you will notice that uh, restaurants that have takeout, there have been um, very long waits. There have been, uh, it, it's, a, it's a slow process and a lot of them are just getting their staff in order and gearing up for what they feel is the um, intense summer season. We always talk about it as starting on 627 but the line sometimes getting through, getting these orders taken, everything is a process. And I think that if you set your um, expectations for your vacationers that are very realistic as the summer continues, that they will do a lot better. Somewhere, Jim, recently I saw something about, you know, a, a complaint that a vacationer had. And I think that if those homeowners had sort of really gone to explaining, you know, this is all a learning curve along the cake, just like it is at home if you did these things. So I think that setting expectations very carefully and communicating that will go a long way with both your vacationers and what they're expecting. But I think that um, we are in a state of starting to get used to these restrictions and opening them up a little bit more and testing the waters. All of these restaurants that are handling takeout have had to come up with brand new procedures and whether they have X amount of windows or registers that weren't inside the building that they can switch around. Um, I think a lot of it is just setting expectations and, and helping people to understand what to expect as the season goes on. Right. Yeah, and, and that's it's, it's true beyond even the restaurants that are opening up and getting their procedures down. All Every town is thinking, what can we do now that our summer traditional events are closed down? There are no more band concerts or the parades or the fireworks aren't, aren't there. So, you know, you're, if you're following your own town, you're probably seeing some of the highlights that, you know, things like, uh, you know, Provincetown is limiting cars down their commercial street. Uh, Hyannis Main Street is limiting their traffic to one way I, or one lane, I believe, to open up space. So all these towns are looking to provide uh, more room for traffic, uh, foot traffic, uh, which will then expand the areas for restaurants and just in, in, enable the uh, free moving of, of folks. And that should take time to implement over the next couple weeks as as towns get more creative and and allow for a new a new normal this summer um, another idea Jim is is um, hiring a catering service or or in telling your your guests about some local caterers who might be able to for instance come and do a lobster and clam bake right at your home for them um, it's it's not inexpensive but probably less expensive than uh, if you were to go, you know, to go out to a restaurant um, between the drinks and everything else. And um, that can be quite nice. You know, they show up, they, they prepare everything and they clean up and then they leave. And you've had a wonderful dinner at home without crowds and just with your family and, and friends. So um, it's another option. And I bet that they're eager to 
do that kind of thing, especially with a lot of events and weddings and um, you know reunions that have been canceled. Um, Doug has another question or comment. Doug, are you unmuted? Okay. I know. I know. I'm a, a real pain. I realize that. I've become yeah, no, no. some kind of not at all. <laughs> we like <laughs> to see <laughs> few things on the. You know, um, our main home is in New Jersey. That's where I am now, and we have the house in Dennis. And um, the thing is, I noticed I was out there for two weeks setting the house up and taking care of this, taking care of that, getting a new housekeeper who's expert in really sanitizing. Her website says we sanitize for COVID. Yeah. Matter I found her with you guys. That's good. On your advertising. So thank you so much. Um, the other thing as far as towels, when I was out, I was having a heck of a time finding paper towels. And also this is I left, I came back a week and a half ago. Paper towels, and I always like Scott tissue. That's my personal preference. And it comes in big things. And they have them when they're um, they're enclosed. Each each one is wrapped. Mm -hmm. which I thought was perfect for this, right? Yep. Rather than putting under the sink the extra, to extra, extra toilet paper that's not wrapped. Mm -hmm. I think people would really appreciate seeing a wrapped toilet paper, number one. What happened to me though, is there a, um, and I never noticed, I'm sorry, is there a Target in on the Cape Target? There's not. I don't think so. Okay, because here in Jersey, I was having a hard time with paper towels. Mm. You could get them, but they'd be like this stupid stuff that it's like you blow your nose in it. Ridiculous. Mm. So the closest one I know is in Plainville. Do you know where that is? It's on Route 24 and 495. No. There's a target. That's a long way. It yeah. is. Yeah. But anyway, well, get, I went should, to welcome to the welcome to the island life. I know. We don't have Home Depots or anything. So. I know. I know. I went to. I so I went to the target here. And I was looking for, I was getting it from little places, like my hardware store had a couple of pieces that were pretty good. I like Bounty, right? It really does it. So I go into Target and I see rows of Bounty and rows of another product that swears, it says compare to Bounty, but you can only take one of each. Mm -hmm. So I took one of each, the packages, and I called my wife. I just come back in my chiropractor. I called my wife, I said, honey, when you're out, Go to Target. I'm only allowed two packages. <laughs> no. So she went out. That's one thing. The only last question I have, and I, I don't know if anybody knows this. I'm concerned about this, really. I think it's the reason we're doing all these things, is when I was there, every few days, I think, or every four or five days, I get a message on the home answering machine telling how many cases have happened so far since mm -hmm. the beginning. And this is just, this is the dentists, you know, all the several dentists. And how many deaths? At that point, this was two and a half weeks ago, there were 18 deaths, right? Since the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any death thing? I'm sorry, because I think that's what we're doing this all about. I mean, if you get sick and you recover, okay. But if you die, that's a problem. Does anybody there know is. anything about the, the whole tape's numbers? Uh, I do not. I know that they've been relatively low um, and that many of them have been in the uh, nursing homes and, uh, you know, assisted living facilities. Mm -hmm. But I don't know a, a number. I feel that it's been relatively low. Yeah, I think the town, I think the state publishes it by the town in Massachusetts. So the, the, oh, yeah. the state's government site has by, by town, you'd have to go through the Cape related towns. Yeah. Um, and I, I, we have a comment, you know, somebody's commented here about about 200 for the whole Cape. But and I think the concern is more just, you know, that kind of number, whatever the number is today, why is it, it you know, with the crowds tripling or quadrupling for the summer season, you know, it, it makes a big difference. So I think that's what people are concerned about, not necessarily what, you know, we've come so far already in, in the Cape and the islands are in good, status right now but what's it going to be like when the influx of people come in from other other states right well um, i found that what what calmed people down you know i mean we're doing all we're jump, doing jumping through so many hoops for this purpose to yep. stay alive right so if we know the numbers and we compare them to past years of flu or anything else we can see the comparison 
Yeah. No, I, th I think the state of Massachusetts is doing a good job, you know, as is a lot of New England, uh, New England, New York um, are in good shape and nobody wants to necessarily let them get down their guard and just keep, keep doing what we need to do to uh, stay safe. So we'll, and we'll okay. keep doing that. We'll keep promoting it <laughs> as well. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, and also just to answer that the question before, uh, while Doug was, uh, we were talking, um, a bunch of people did chime in. Target. Target is in Hyannis and oh. is in Lareham. So we do have a couple of targets. So check them out. Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, Carolyn, I'm going to get you in. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, oh, so I just Googled. It says we've had 140 people die of COVID on, on Cape Cod so okay. far. At um, so I was at my rental this morning just doing an inspection before I had some, some people coming up today. Uh, they're redoing the street. They're doing, I'm in Hyannis, they're redoing C Street behind the house and they're repaving the street and my house was literally shaking with the machinery and, um, I have heard they start about seven in the morning. So I'm wondering what do people normally do if the girls that are there now, let's say they get woken up at 7 a.m. and the house is shaking because they're redoing the road. Like do people make an accommodation, give them a partial refund or what? what is, I, I'm sort of just mm -hmm. trying to get what people normally would do. Yeah, well, under those circumstances, you probably do want to do something special for them just to make them feel a little better. Um, if this is nothing that you had control over um, and you might want to, do you have any idea how long they'll be there? The, the workers? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, muted again. You're muted. <laughs> um, for your future guests, you, hold on. You're, okay. you're on. And um, it's. I think it's only supposed to be through the end of this week. Ah. Uh, and you know, I'm oh. just yeah. trying to, you know, what just in case yeah. I get any complaints. It yeah. hasn't happened in the past, but right. you know, you might want to um, give them a gift um, gift card, um, you know, just online for um, a restaurant in the area. Just hmm. as a, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, and I hope you can, you know, enjoy a nice meal on us. Mm -hmm. I do think. Okay, right, that's a good idea. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, thanks, Carolyn. All right. Lauren, did you have something to add? I just saw your well, hand. I, I was just, I, I was reading the chat, and I also had looked up while, well, uh, about the target in Hyannis and, and Wareham, but I also think that part of that communication with your guests this summer, and I do reiterate what Joan said, and what one of the questions was, that to have your guests that are coming by car and can bring things, be prepared as much as possible, because I think that they're not going to want to go to Target and Hyannis on their vacation any more than we like to do it during the week, getting whatever supplies we need right now. So I think that, you know, it's important to tell them. And with that, you know, one of the things we had suggested, you know, if they want to bring paper products or any of those things that you're not necessarily supplying for them this year, I think offering for, you know, this is what I have, this is what I'm leaving for you, this is what we can be doing together. And then also you may want to bring some of those things with you because it will make your trip much easier and then they'll have it with them. So I think that preparation and communication works really well. Yep. But um, just to reiterate the, you know, we keep talking about the communication with our guests and your guests of before arrival and what, doing what you can do to communicate with them about your turnover process uh, or things in the area, restaurants, re uh, grocery stores, and so forth. I think just the general message, the message that you've seen, you see we need a vacation promoting is just to vacation responsibly. And we're going to keep doing that. And we've been promoting this on our Facebook pages, uh, we've, on our blog, just how to vacation responsibly and what that means. And throughout the summer, we're going to be doing weekly updates, talking about uh, new events that may be coming up, new um, things to do, things to do outside to promote the, promote the outdoors, maybe 
call them hidden gems and so forth, that people may want to explore more this summer. Maybe they're not going to be doing some of the normal things that they're used to doing. So what? give them some ideas. So we're going to be doing that. You'll see that on our blog and on our Facebook pages. And feel free to pick that up. And if you have your own channel for rental, uh, feel free to share it there. Uh, feel free to share it with your vacationers, but kind of that overall theme, vacation, vacationing responsibly is what we're striving for, ensuring that we're telling our guests and, and ensuring everyone has a safe summer. So with that, uh, I, there are no more hands at the moment. Joan, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I would just like to remind everyone to remind their guests, especially if they're coming from out of state, that masks are mandatory um, when in public. We even see people going to the beach and they're wearing masks until they get to their spot on the beach. Um, we saw a poster the other day that um, it was online and uh, it showed the percentage of probability of getting the virus uh, between two people, starting with if neither the carrier or the other person, I forget what they labeled them, um, were wearing a mask, the probability of getting the virus was about 90%. And then it went down from there, depending on who was wearing a mask, to the very bottom where both the carrier and the other person were wearing masks. The risk was a, of probability was about like 2% or something. So um, it is so important. I know that's something that Governor Baker has been stressing all along, and it's something that's really working here. You know, when you see other parts of the country and especially those hot spots, those states that are increasing, um, I think that they're much more lax in the face mask covering restrictions. I, I think that, you know, in some cases there aren't any, and I think it makes all the difference in the world. So if you could just remind your uh, guests of that um, so that they're aware. I mean, you can't go into a store in Massachusetts without a mask. You could be turned away. Um, same thing with restaurants. So they, they need to be prepared for that. Very good. I, we have another couple questions here, so we can keep going with uh, Marilyn. You unmute can your... you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can now. Um, I have tenants from Canada that just canceled and have to return their deposit. I have not been able to find any place that has international money orders. Does anybody know where I can get one? Hmm. Joan, do you know? Beta, do beta you know is? the best way to send money, send funds internationally? Transfer-wise transfer is by far the best online transfer agent, I find. They're the, the best okay. rates, and but Otherwise, I would probably start with my bank. Have you, you have you tried there already? In my bank, they sent me to the post office. The post uh -huh. office said they don't do it. I went to Stop and Shop today, and I got um, Wells Fargo money orders, but they're in U.S. funds. Mm. Yeah, you, I would look up TransferWise online, TransferWise.com. Yep. Okay, thank you. Sure, all one word, transfer wise. All right, thanks, Marilyn. Uh, move on. I'm not sure this person's name because you're on an iPad, but I'm unmuting you, R L I P E's. Uh oh, she's still not Hi, there. Hi, yeah. I know I spoke to Hi. somebody this week about the um, liability insurance and um, the with the gut the state saying that we need a higher liability from 500 to 1 million and the mass fair plan doesn't cover it mm -hmm. they don't go that high and i was not i haven't yet been able to find because it's in a trust that you can have um an umbrella insurance so i don't know you know, one, I don't know how the state would know unless somebody files a claim or some lawyer goes after it, but 
I mean, does anybody else have this issue and what they've done? Hmm. I think I was the one that spoke with you. And since I spoke with you, I was able through my agent to get a separate policy for the additional 500,000. So um, I, I think, have you tried your agent? Did you get I've tried and you know, it's gonna be very expensive. It's like uh, almost $600, but that's like really pushing it up. They don't understand why I'm even doing this. And, you know, we've had these houses for 60 years and we've never had to worry about it. And, and I think I've had one claim over the 60 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is it something that we should be really worrying about? Is anybody else just ignoring it? Or do they, do they have able to get that coverage? Mm -hmm. Well, if they're ignoring it, they're not telling us. So we're not um, <laughs> privy to that. But um, it, it's it's a tough one. Um, that is one of the, the regulations um, that came along with the lodging tax that you had to have a million dollar um, liability coverage. Um, let me, um, can you email me and, and um, I will uh, look into it and see if I can find something. I, I know there's one um, agency on the Cape, um, uh, is it Gray? Um, I, I have to, if you could just email Joan at we need a vacation.com. Okay. Uh, let me take a look too. Okay. Thank you. Well, and just a comment we've never provided the linens, but we did provide the comforters and the pillows and I've got repeats and everybody is fine. They just, I told them I wasn't doing it this year and mm -hmm. they were happy. I told them that, you know, the stores are scarce. So if there's something you really want or your paper products to bring them with you, because I can't guarantee there's going to be things here. And everybody was fine. Good, and, good. You know. As long as they know ahead of time. You know, yeah. Yep, that's the important part. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go there. Just che also check out the comments. Just a lot of comments in here about other policies through AAA or Lloyd's of London. So a good place to check out the comments uh, from other homeowners here. Um, I'm going to try to get Robin and try to get you in. Um, so I don't see your hand, but Robin, are you there? And would you like to <laughs> add something? Unmute. There you go. Hi, Robin. Hi. Um, I've had the pleasure of staying on the Cape for the last week, and um, I just wanted to remind everybody if there's some way of talking to your renters about that we're going through all these measures for their comfort and their safety, but also the people who are living here have not gone through a rise in numbers in COVID like a lot of us have already lived through. Mm -hmm. So just to be really sensitive to everybody working. I mean, wear the masks. There's, there's a lot of people that I talk to and they're working in convenience stores and restaurants and people are walking in without any masks. And they're just, they're just oblivious that the people here on the Cape have not lived through the rise and the fall of numbers and they're anticipating the rise and they're anticipating this person that's coming into the store without a mask infecting them basically so if there's some way of just you know be extra nice to the people that are working here you know um so it's you've just, actually seen people without masks walking into stores and restaurants oh yeah i have not seen that yeah. at all what what town are you in east town hmm interesting yeah. um and it's not a huge population, but there are people, you know, there's, I don't know whether they subscribe to the idea that the masks aren't worth anything or what, but the bottom line is, you know, it's happening. And if we can impress on people to wear their masks or just be nice to the people that are working here, they're doing their best they can. They're, they're trying to ebb and flow with all the, sure. all the criteria of their restaurants work and, all that so my girls are both actually working on the cape for the first time this summer so they're going through the whole thing too <laughs> yeah i mean just just some sort of note saying you know that they're working as hard as they can to make their stay pleasant as well as we did too you know yeah i mean that's what we can 
we can hope for and push for is that everyone is respectful and they're kind and they're patient and understanding of the guidelines and follow the guidelines. I mean, that's, you know, we'll, we'll instill that. I mean, that's our message to vacationers broadly from weaning there's, vacation. Hopefully there's you, definitely less workers too. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to do double time with less people. Exactly. So. And the face masks are mandatory. It's not something that's just discretionary or, you know, that's right. Practice. It's mandatory. But, but you're a business owner and you're not going to blow the whistle on a customer because well, that's the fellow, part too. fellow customers might, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Robin. I think we have time for one more here. Patty, we'll get you in. Unmute. Unmute. There you are. Hi, Patty. No, yes, I was just going to say our house insurance, I think, covers up us to $500,000 liability. Then our umbrella will kick in. So if you have an umbrella, check that because you, you know, you don't, you don't need to have maybe the house insurance up to a million if the umbrella is kicking in at 500,000, but just, you know, check that with, with your insurance company. And yeah, my husband just saw somebody went in subway the other day and a man and son came in after him without a mask on. Then other customers came in with masks and the, the employees, I think, are afraid to say anything. Most of them are younger people, but, you know, it's sort of too bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, there is one of those handouts we do have in our, our list of printable materials. I, the state has one, but we, we maybe it's and maybe we are have put out the state one as well. Just recommend for every homeowner is uh, add to your list of posters that you provide for every guest that they see upon check-in, they see your cleaning protocol and they also see the state guidelines and recommendations for best practices. Uh, we, we, a lot of you probably are well aware of all these and they are second nature now, but there are some folks out there that may just, they just need that reminder and uh, understanding that it's, that these are not just <laughs> suggestions, but we really, they are, required well i i emailed a few of my my people all my people and some of them canceled because they're nervous about it but what i did was i opened their week up and i told them if someone inquires i'll give them first chance to you know have it back yeah. um but those few people decided they're not going to come um but other people from mid-august are coming so but i said if you have any thoughts you might not let me know i'll open the week and if someone asks i'll you know go right back to you i'll tell them i have a lease out and see See if you want to come. It gives them that option at least. Um, great. Thinking ahead. No, thank you for these. These are great. These little, uh, these little things. I think we should keep doing them, even if you do them every other week, because you, they right. can, you can use them in lots of capacities, even beyond yeah. them. Good. Yeah. I think we definitely will. Thank, thank you, Patty. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> no, I, I think I, Patty's right. I, we, we, we want to keep these going. Um, we may slow it down from a weekly basis at some point, but uh, we do plan to hold this again next week, first week of July. Uh, can't believe it's already July, uh, but we'll hold one more session and then decide on how, what the frequency is for beyond this. But certainly it's a useful meeting to get bring a group of homeowners together uh, and answer some of these questions that we can and provide any sort of updates that we have on our end. Joan, anything you wanna add? No, just keep doing what you're doing, everyone. I know that you're you're being responsible and you're encouraging your guests to be responsible too. So that's all we can do and just hope for the best. All right, we'll stay safe and thank you for coming today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us.